this is Tomlin from TomlinHarmonicaSchool.com and today I'm not going to be teaching you any harmonica but please don't go away because we're actually joined by the fabulous Beth from Beth Rose. Uh, she is going to be teaching us how to get started singing and singing is such a wonderful uh, extra tool to have in your arsenal as a harmonica player. It'll make you a much better musician uh, and it will also make you a lot more employable. So. Let's uh, hand it over to Beth and uh, get some tips for starting singing. So actually we just had a discussion before this uh, video and one of the first things you mentioned that everyone struggles with is pitch. Now everyone has their own levels and you might be starting at a different level than someone else you know. That does not matter. Everyone can learn pitch. It might take a bit of time but you definitely can learn. What I always do with my students when they're first starting out is get them to use a guitar tuner. Now you can use a physical guitar tuner or you can just download an app. Now would you be able to give me a G? Of course. Now the next thing you want to do is try and match that with your voice. So, ah, there we go, somewhere around there. You can see how it will slide up and down. Now when you get the little green arrow, you have hit that dead on. The main thing that I want you to focus on is how that note then feels in your body. It might be a little bit unusual at first, we're not used to thinking about how sound feels to us. But you might feel some notes in your chest, you might feel some in your head, you might even perceive it as being around your head and that doesn't matter at all, everyone feels it a little bit differently. But once you've built up this repertoire of feelings, then you can use all those notes. The next thing that's actually really similar to harmonica is breathing. And um, with harmonica, you obviously have your in-breath. It's a little bit different because uh, with singing, your in-breath has to be really quick a lot of the time. So we're gonna do a little exercise with this. And I have given you a straw and a half-filled vessel of water. <laughs> now, um, as I say, our in-breath has to be super quick but you don't want to really draw that air in. You want it to be nice and relaxed, mm -hmm. much like harmonica. So um, actually, I'm going to get you to put that down. And the first thing I want you to do is put your hands on your lower ribs. And we're just going to do a really gentle <gasps> Now, the first thing that I want you to try and see if you can feel is your ribs moving up, mm -hmm. out sideways. Can you feel that? Yep. That is exactly what you want. What often people will do, you're very good, you've practiced your breathing, is people will go <gasps> and they'll tense up their shoulders, especially this upper part of the body. I always think it's like a swan. The top of your body is going to be lovely and relaxed and your ribs are going to do the work. Now, the, another thing to think about is the back of your body. Actually, all, most of our lung tissue is at the back of our body. Our heart's at the front, filling up a lot of that space. So can you put your hands around the back of your ribs? When you do that, <gasps> Yeah, you should feel those moves yeah. as well. Um, now, last thing is, I've done something really silly. I've made you go <gasps> and make a noise. Ideally, we don't want to make that much noise. You want it to be a really, okay. again, like harmonica, you don't want, <sighs> you want a- Natural breath. A natural breath. So let's give that one more go. Exactly. I, I, did, I did breathe, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but that's perfect. And Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the, the next thing that we need to look at is the out breath. Not, more breath doesn't always mean better. We want a consistent breath that um, will support the note. Support is one of those weird terms that we never really know what it means, um, but it doesn't mean pushing, and that's the most important thing to know. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab your bottle of water and straw, and we're going to do that lovely in breath that you just did there. Perfect. And then we're going to do and blow bubbles in your water. Now your aim is that you want it to be like boiling water. If it's too much, you're gonna find out very quickly and you're gonna splash yourself in the face. And oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, and if it's not enough, it'll be like simmering water. So let's just give that a go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enough. 
That's enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the most important thing which you did really well there was that you kept it really consistent. What most people will find is that it will kind of go up and down and you might get a big splash and then it suddenly dies down and more than holding it forever, you're, you might not have to sing a phrase that long unless mm. you're doing something quite extreme. Is that you keep it really, really consistent. Okay, this is going to lead us on to our warm-up. This is what I use all the time, and we're going to use this bottle of water and straw. Um, I use this all the time. It's a lovely, quiet warm-up, and um, it is just a really efficient way of singing, and it stops you pushing. So, we're going to try any notes, something comfortable in your <coughs> range, and we're going to do an ooh. It can be that note. It can okay. be anyone. I don't think straw. it'll be that note. Through my straw. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Great. You can stop. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, that was perfect in breath. You can see that those lovely kind of bubbles mm -hmm. going nice and even. To warm up, what I would do is a couple of slides. You can, I would keep actually an entire couple of minutes of ooh. So give that okay. a go. Yeah. Your eyebrows don't need to help. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel them. <laughs> um, now, one of the things that you might find when you're getting that simmering water or a little bit of push when it dies down, what might be happening is some of the air is coming up through your nose. Okay. So what we're going to try is the same exercise, but you're going to hold your nose. Okay. Lovely. It kind of equalized a bit at the end, but there was a... I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. At first it was like, is yeah. a little bit extra? So. Much like your harmonica, you want to raise that soft palate a mm -hmm. bit and get that um, big open cavity. Uh -huh. And um, if you hold your nose, our body tends to naturally do it. it. Just I think it's our body doesn't like the feeling of the air building up behind our nose. Um, but you can try it through your straw and then once you've got that feeling of that open cavity, just do it without holding your nose. Mm -hmm. um, you can also try if you have a song or a particularly difficult song. Uh, I love just bubbling through that song before I go and sing it out loud. And it's a great warm up to start my day. Awesome. The next tip is kind of a short one, but it's really, really important. Volume, much like breathing, and um, more air doesn't mean more volume. And this is really, really important. Our vocal cords are so small. They're um, 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters long, dependent on you're a man or a woman or what vocal range you have. And if you push lots and lots of air behind them, they live in here actually, but let's see if we can find, let's see if we can feel our vocal cords or the feeling of them first so that you can find where they are. So if you touch your chin and then you kind of draw your finger down, you'll feel your a lump here. For guys, that's your Adam's apple. And if you do a mmm, you'll feel that vibration from your vocal cords. Yeah. So, they're tiny little things, the air moves through them, and that makes them vibrate, and that produces the noise. But, if you push loads of air, poor guys just pop up and you get like, ah, which has much less tone than, ah, and I'm using much less breath. So, if you can um, bring that back to the breath that we just did with those bubbles, remember how those bubbles felt in your body again, how much breath you were using there, that is perfect. But the most important thing is to remember that volume is going to come from resonance. And resonance comes from whatever, the shape that you're making from your vocal tract. Play about the shapes that you're making with your mouth, your tongue, your jaw. And actually I'm going to give you a little exercise for this to see um, what different sounds we can make. So give me a dopey woo 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 sort of sound. Woo woo woo. Okay, so you see that big kind of open space? I always think it sounds like Boris Johnson. I always say to my people, sound like <laughs> Boris Johnson, how he sings. And that makes a really warm sound. Singers like Adele actually lower their larynx, that's what's happening here, and they use that really open space. Now, if you give me like a ah, eh, so eh. that's kind of moving through your nose a little bit, and it has a kind of narrower, brighter sound. So, though, if you give me, hmm, see if you can move between the two of those. So let's go from ow, 
Good, okay, now let's have one held note. Oh, and see if we can just change the shape or oh. act. Oh, 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 all, it's all about experimentation, mm -hmm. and none of these tones are actually wrong. It's just working out one where your voice feels stable because you're playing around. There are points where it isn't stable mm -hmm. because th that just doesn't work with your voice, and that's fine. And finding the tone that you like because it's all different. We all like different mm -hmm. tones, and we all have different voices. And um, yeah, I, I never like to say that anything is wrong, especially with tone, it's okay. so diverse. The next thing is navigating your break and understanding registers and that can be a little bit tricky at first and it takes quite a bit of time um, and I, I definitely think with learning some of your registers it can be helpful to uh, get help from a teacher with this but um, we're going to play around just so that you have a basic understanding of what registers are and again it's contentious in the vocal coach world because everyone has different terminology but regardless of that it doesn't even matter um, we have an area of our voice that we often use to speak in most people use it to speak in and this generally gets called chest voice because most people feel it in their chest and if you don't also okay because it's not universal so give me like a hey hey yeah, and if you put your hand on your chest, oh, you'll probably feel that buzzing in there. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. So this is what people mostly refer to as chest voice. Give me a woo, woo. This is what people mostly refer to as head voice because it has a lighter feeling mm. and often people feel it in their head. Now there's this interesting gray area in the middle that people often refer to as mix. And this both anatomically and acoustically is a mix of the two uh, sounds. So, um, I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration on this because it is a little tricky. You, mixed voice can be anything in between uh, chest voice and head voice and these two tones that we got there. Um, and you can use all of these registers on one note. So, if I was like, hmm, what's an A? Would you be able to play me an A or a G? I don't mind. An A or a G? I can play you an A. So I could sing my A, ah, head voice. Mm -hmm. I could sing it, ah, chest voice. I could sing it, ah, a mix. They're all ever so slightly different in tone, um, and <clears throat> can all be used emotionally in different ways, um, and all feel quite different. And this is again going to be about experimentation in your voice, finding out how each register feels and also how it relates to you emotionally. I think that's one of my favorite keys to singing is making sure that everything you sing kind of comes back to the emotion at the end of the day as well. And that leads me on really nicely to finding your own voice. Uh, finding your own voice is something that I find really interesting because we already have our own voices. And it's also interesting because a lot of singers get a bad reputation for putting on a voice, mm -hmm. but um, my point of view is that if you're making it with your anatomy, then it is your voice. Like, you're not actually stealing another human's voice, it's impossible. So it is your voice, and you're just using a colour normally that people don't expect. Uh, but my main tip for this is actually listen to your speaking voice. What idiosyncrasies do you have when you speak? Um, how do you use consonants? Do you slide? Do you use breathy tone? Um, we all have very unusual ways of speaking as individuals. And if we can take more of this natural communication into our singing and not think of them as so separate, then often we can find something that is unique to us and communicates really effectively in a way that is very, very unique. My final note, and I have been saying about this throughout this whole video, is that effort does not equal output. And that can be breath, it can be physical tension, and it can also be mental tension, how we approach uh, a note. So, much like harmonica, just relax and enjoy it.
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much, Beth, for coming and doing this. It has been so much fun working with you and uh, that, that was so useful. Uh, and what I'd like to suggest is that you all check out both of Beth's amazing channels. So she's got Beth Rose, where she does the vocal coach thing and she does lots of reaction videos to amazing vocal performances. And then there is Raw! Exclamation point, uh, where she goes out and uh, learns new skills and uh, you might see her learning uh, a little bit of harmonica. Uh, mm -hmm. So you should go and check that out. All right, thank you so much, Beth, and thank you so much for watching, and happy harping. And that was an excellent roar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well practiced. <laughs>